Welcome back. This is Lesson 2 for How to Compose Music 101, brought to you by ArtofComposing.com. Today's lesson is all about diatonic harmony. Specifically in today's lesson, you're going to learn what diatonic harmony is and how to use it, how to take the basic ideas that you composed in Lesson 1 and make them fit over a new harmony, and what inversions are and how composers use them. You'll notice that outlining one chord limits what you can do with that basic idea. That's why today we're going to look at changing the underlying harmony while still keeping the character the same. Listen to this example of a basic idea. The first two bars are written in the home key, just as we learned in Lesson 1, but the second two bars are written over a new harmony. This specific example changes the underlying harmony to the second most important harmony in tonal music, dominant. So let's look a little more in depth at what diatonic harmony is. Diatonic harmony is chords built off of each note in a scale using thirds without accidentals. There is one exception to this rule. If you're in a minor key, you want to raise the seventh note in the scale, also known as the leading tone. The reason is, it's only a half step away from tonic, and it gives it a much stronger pull. Listen to this example of a dominant chord without the raised leading tone, and then one with the raised leading tone. Let's look at a few different chords. In C major, tonic has a third of E and a fifth of G. We do the same for other chords. Starting on D, the third is F, and the fifth is A. Now you may have noticed that they have a fundamentally different sound. This is because of their tonality. The first one, C, is a major chord, and the second one, D, is a minor chord. In each scale, as you build the chords, you'll find a mix of major, minor, and even a diminished chord. Listen to all the triads in a major key and then a minor key. There's one more thing I'm going to cover in diatonic harmony. Each triad has two different variations called inversions. When you invert a chord, you take the lowest note and you move it up an octave to the top. Inversions give us the ability to have a much smoother bass line. A quick note about chord symbols. There are many different ways to say what a chord or harmony is. In jazz, rock, and pop, it's most commonly written with the letter name of the chord and then major, minor, or diminished after it. In classical, the most common way to write a chord is through figured bass. Figured bass uses a Roman numeral system and then an inversion number afterwards. For major chords, the Roman numeral is capitalized. For minor chords, it's lowercase, and then for diminished, it's lowercase, and it has a little O afterwards. Let's look at the process of changing your melody to fit a new harmony. The first method is to transpose your melody exactly as it is, but starting on a new note. So if your melody is over a C major chord and starts on a C, and your new chord is G major, then your new melody has to start on a G. From there, you'll transpose each note the same number of intervals. Remember, in diatonic harmony, you don't have to use accidentals unless it's the leading tone in minor. It should sound something like this. This next method is a little more advanced. 
Pick out the chord tones from your melody. If you remember from lesson one, these should be on beats one and three, although you may have other chord tones on other beats. Next, for each of those chord tones, find the nearest chord tone in the new harmony. So if our original harmony is C major, and we start on the note C, and we're moving to G major, we've got two potential chord tones, D or B. If the two harmonies share a chord tone, like C has a G as the fifth, and G has a G as the root, then you can leave it as is. Now if you have passing tones or neighbor tones in the original, you can add those in to keep the same general rhythm and melodic shape. It should sound something like this. Both of these methods are forms of repetition. Specifically, they're forms of statement response repetition. The ways of developing your basic idea that you learned in the first lesson, inversion, retrograde, and retrograde inversion, all still apply. So now you can see from one basic idea, you've got eight different melodic ideas. At this point, make sure you print off the worksheets below this lesson. In the next two lessons, we're going to look at simple musical form, Following that, we've got two more lessons on harmony, so it's going to get really good. If you found this lesson through a friend or through YouTube and you want to have access to the complete course, go to artofcomposing.com and sign up for the newsletter.